Hey guys, welcome back to Between Mile Markers. So this morning I was having my morning coffee and I was scrolling through my emails and I ran across an email from Starlink informing us of some changes that are going to happen to our service. And I looked at it and I thought, well, I'll take a look at that later. But then I started scrolling through our socials and I noticed that a lot of you guys were talking about it too. So I thought, what a great opportunity for us to have a discussion about this, about what these changes are and what it means to not only us, but to you guys too. And more importantly, what you guys need to do so you guys don't get ripped off. So let's get into it. So the first question that you should all be asking yourself is why should you believe this guy right here? Well, just to give you a little quick backstory, if you've been watching our channel or our videos for some time, you'll know that I am an IT guy. I've been in IT for about 30 years now, and I've been in the mobile device space since about 2007. As a matter of fact, before mobile devices were really even a thing, uh, and we were dealing with these things right here. So, uh, so I have worked for Fortune 500 companies. I have worked for state governments. I have worked for major airlines here in the U.S. So I've been around the block a little bit and believe me, connectivity is a big deal when it comes to dealing with what I deal with on a daily basis. So I do know a thing or two about what we're talking about here today. So let's go ahead and let's dive into the email. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to e read this to you guys verbatim to make sure that I don't miss anything and that you guys actually hear exactly what I'm seeing here on my screen. So uh, the email goes, thank you for being a Starlink customer. We are making changes to our service plan and price in order to deliver an improved Starlink experience. Effective immediately, you will have access to the following features on Starlink Roam, in motion use, international travel, and coastal coverage. To support these enhancements and our ongoing network improvements, your monthly service price for Starlink Roam will be $165. The updated monthly price and new terms of service will go into effect starting October 10th, 2024. Thank you for being a Starlink Roam customer and supporting our efforts to deliver high speed, low latency internet access across the globe. And it's signed the Starlink team. Now, when I read that email this morning, the first thing that I thought of was my price is going up 15 bucks a month. Now, why is that? So let's go ahead and let's dig into exactly the history of this and what they're doing on their side. So when I signed up with Starlink back in early 2023, I signed up for the mobile regional subscription, which is an unlimited plan and it allows you to go around the country and use your Starlink whenever you're at your campground or you know if you are camped anywhere stationary. But it does not allow you to use it while you're driving down the highway in between your, your spots that you're going to. Now, Starlink is really, really great for when you're in like these rural areas, places where cellular signal isn't really effective. And it actually works pretty decently when you are in the urban areas, but there are some things that they do that I don't really care for, which we'll cover later. So now a little bit later, Starlink released a new plan for roaming. And this roaming plan allowed you to have your Starlink system mounted to your RV or your boat or whatever you guys use. And it allows you to use it while you're traveling. And in order to do that, you needed to be on a special plan and they charge you a premium for that plan. Now, what they're doing here today, I think is just an evolution of those plans. And what they're doing is they have now changed that regional subscription to a roaming plan. So that us RVers can now use our Starlinks if they're affixed to our RVs while we're driving down the road without an issue. So now for some of you, that may be a big deal for some of us, myself included, probably not so much because I'm busy driving. I'm not on the computer. I have my cellular plan 
And you know, if we stop anywhere, we're probably going to be using our phones and not our Wi-Fi. So the plan that they're offering us, a hmm, little bit marginal in what they're giving us as far as the mobile roam. Now, underneath us, our viewers plan, it's called the Rome plan. If you take a look at Starlink's website and on the website, it gives you all of the, the features that are in each one of their Rome plans. And they have two plans. They have a 50 gigabyte roaming plan and they have their unlimited roaming plan. And on their website, it shows the features of everything. And they do a pretty good job of explaining what each of that is. Now, the one thing that I do like about Starlink is if we are not using it, it allows us to pause our service. Uh, for example, uh, we go down to Florida for the winter. And while we're in Florida, usually where we're staying, we have great cellular coverage. So there's really no need for us to have that Starlink connection. So what we do is we pause that during the winter months. And then during the summer, when we start traveling more around the US and we get into some of those rural areas, we'll turn that service back on so that we make sure that we get the connectivity we need. So there are some things that you do need to be aware of if you're going to go for the cheaper 50 gigabyte plan. And here's the rub with that 50 gigabyte plan. Now, I'm sure that a lot of us RVers out there, you know, we're doing whatever we can to save money. So we're going to go with the cheapest plan possible if we can do it. But the one thing to keep in mind, especially with this 50 gigabyte plan, is you have to understand what that's going to get you. Now, think of it this way. If you want to watch a movie and you are going to stream that movie off of Netflix, pick, pick your, your own service. Now, that one movie alone is going to be anywhere from three to five gigabyte. Now, if you're only getting 50 gigabytes per month, think about what else you have attached to there and how much data that is being used up and how fast you're going to go through that 50 gigabytes. Now, one of the things that we did before we got on the road is I actually did some analyzing of exactly how much data we use on a monthly basis being an IT guy, working from home, having gadgets attached to the internet left and right, our Alexa, our Google Home, you name it, we've got it attached. And it turned out that we were spending about 800 gigabyte a month. So where that comes into play is the fine print. If you look at the service plans on Starlink's website, in the fine print, it says users on the Rome 50 gigabyte plan are limited to 50 gigabyte of data and can pay by the gigabyte for additional data. For, for information on this and the coverage in motion, use the CFAQ here. Now, the one thing that the Starlink site does not tell you is how much they're charging you per gigabyte after that 50 gigabyte. And I did a little research on this and I found the answer. It is $2 a gigabyte. Now, $2, eh, it's not here, not there, whatever. But I did a little searching on our socials for people who have been bitten by this. And people that don't know that this is the case end up with $800 bills, $1,500 bills, I actually saw one post where somebody was paying $3,500 for a monthly fee because they weren't aware that there's a toggle in their Starlink application that says, yes, I would like to get additional data after my 50 gig instead of shutting me down. And if you didn't know that was there or you don't know what it's for or you don't understand the plan, you can really rank up a very, very large bill. So let's quickly go over the international coverage that now comes with this new Rome plan. Uh, in the documentation on the website, it says that you are covered for data for up to two months outside of the US, if that's where you're, you're getting your service from, into any country. Now, where this comes in handy is, let's say you wanna take a trip to Alaska and you're driving up through Canada, you can still use your Starlink through there. Or 
if you for some reason want to go into Mexico and do some boondocking or do some camping in, across the border in Mexico, you can use your Starlink there. However, for the most of us, I think we pretty much stay within the contiguous U.S. states. So I'm not sure that's going to add much value, but it is there if you want it. So here is my one gripe that I do have with Starlink. Uh, outside of anything that revolves publicly or rumors around Starlink or whoever owns Starlink, you know who I'm talking about. The one thing that I do have a complaint about is that they do offer two other plans. So let's go back to their website. And as you can see, they have a residential plan and they have a boat plan. Now, if you look at the boat plan on the right, you can see that it's got a lot of the same services that the roaming plan does. However, look at the price of the roaming 50 gigabyte plan for that we use versus the 50 gigabyte plan that you have if you're on a boat. Now, also on the left side is the residential plan. This plan is for people who live in rural areas that want to get satellite service. It's a great service, don't get me wrong. But my biggest gripe is the price. Now you look at the price for residential service and it's $120 a month versus the new $165 a month that they're charging us RVers. And the 50 gigabyte plan for the boats is $250 a month. Now, why the difference? That is the question. And that's what I want to know because we are all using the same satellites. And if this is a global satellite system with as many satellites as they have in orbit, what does it matter if we're on the water or if we're traveling down a highway or if I'm in my cabin in Maine? So why the price difference? We're all using the same data and we're all using the same speeds. Now, the one thing that I can tell you is that the mobile roaming people get deprioritized during peak hours. And what does that mean? That means that during prime time hours, they throttle back the RV people so that they can provide more bandwidth to the residential customers. So I can prove that by doing a speed test in the morning time where I'm at, where I'm running a specific speed. And then if I run that same exact test during prime time hours, it is greatly reduced. So we're paying more for services that we're not really using, and we're paying more than our residential people are doing, but we're paying less than people that have boats. So that to me is my biggest complaint. So if you guys know why that is, please drop up me a comment below, educate me because I don't understand. So let's move on and let's finally wrap this up. So what does all this mean? Well, I think that's going to be just pretty much personal to you guys. Uh, for me personally, they're going to be raising my rates $15 a month. And for me, I, I don't have much of a choice. I, I can't do a 50 gigabyte plan. So I have to stick with the unlimited plan. It does come in handy. It, yeah, it sucks that you have to pay that extra $15 a month. It feels like all of our subscription services are being ratcheted up here and there a little bit at a time. But for me, I'm going to pay it. For a lot of you, you may go, mm -mm, nope, I'm done. Or you may say, I'm going to downgrade to that 50 gigabyte plan. But if you do that, please be aware of the pitfalls that they don't tell you. So with that, I hope this helped. I hope we were able to have a good discussion here today and educate you a little bit more. And like I said, if you've got some insight that I don't have, drop us a comment below. And please, guys, you know, it, drop us a comment and please don't forget to like and subscribe below. Uh, it really helps our channel out. 
Uh, it's things like this that we try to get out to you guys as fast as possible so that it stays relevant. So please like and subscribe below, ring that bell, get those notifications when we drop new videos. We'll see you again next time between mile markers.